The Heavy is a much more complicated class to master than I feel people give credit to him for. Much of what he does is standing still and holding left click. That's true. And yeah, he has loads more health than every other class. And he can even increase that further. Yes, medics tend to shove a healing rod so far up his ass, they can sometimes become partially immortal if they get one of the best medics in the game, but people tend to overlook the importance of movement. I mean, standing still rarely gets you places in the game. Look at the likes of Doom and Quake. Those games work so well because you need to stay on the move in order to be less easily hit by bullets or rockets. And in this game, it's not so much different, except Heavy's whole shtick is that he doesn't go very fast. This is to counteract his large health pool and tendency to tank, so much so he's even received an unlock to make him more mobile at the cost of being more vulnerable. Heavy is a naturally big target both in terms of size and importance. He can be a deciding factor between a successful push and a failed push. All of this coupled with the previously mentioned slow movement, he equally needs to go fast in this game of ever-changing waves. You gotta go up, you gotta go back, you gotta flank, you gotta tank. Heavy can fill many roles, but in this game of always moving and changing, could you succeed by staying utterly, completely, and totally still? Well, looking at the engineer who was initially designed with the intent of staying in one place, no, not very often. The engineer was given the ability to move his buildings because of how the flow of the game works, and Heavy got a weapon to make him less mobile. Now that's odd. If moving is so important, why make yourself less capable of moving? Well, like I've mentioned, he does have a tendency to be healed, and with a larger health pool, staying in one spot could be valuable in many specific situations. Especially with a 20% damage buff on a weapon that promotes both attack and defense playstyles, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Hello all, my name is Cody, and I'm here to ask one simple question, and hopefully get one simple answer. How bad could it be? I'd like to start by saying thank you to German Peter for the suggestion. This is Heavy's debut in the series. I've never made a video specifically about him or his weapon, so the Brass Beast is probably a good start. You see, the Brass Beast is a weapon, as I hope I've pretty well established, breaks the very concept of Team Fortress 2. Nearly every game mode in Team Fortress 2 revolves around the objective moving, the objective being picked up and moved, or you moving toward the objective. How can you do that if you have such a horrible movement speed while right clicking and shooting? Note, the heavy moves around 47% slower with the default minigun, but with the brass beast, he moves 60% slower. That's a whole 13%, which may not seem like much at first, but even 5% or 2% becomes a deciding factor for many situations in TF2. Remember, Team Fortress 2 is a first person shooter. Shooting is pretty much exclusively the one thing you're expected to do a lot of. This holds problematic overall because miniguns in Team Fortress 2 have a very noteworthy damage falloff, meaning the farther away your target is from you, the harder it will be to eliminate them. Heavy is literally the slowest class in TF2, so he's already a pretty easy target to get away from much of the time, but with the Brass Beast, chances are you'll rarely see any enemies to begin with. The Brass Beast deals 20% extra damage, and if you drop below 50% health, you'll gain 20% resistances from all sources. So it'd be like suicide trying to fight a heavy one-on-one -on -one with anything except another heavy also with the Brass Beast. You'll be out damaged in seconds, and the resistance buff only worsens the situation. Remember, TF2 is just as much about knowing your limits, game sense, and recognition as it is about moving. So if you see a heavy with the Brass Beast, and he's doing anything except looking the other way, run. All of this might sound like it's a really good weapon, so much so it makes people want to run away. But in reality, it's pretty weak with its spin-up time penalty. You see, with your slow spin-up time, you effectively have as much reaction time. So even if you do theoretically have the recognition reflex of a robot, you can't necessarily react accordingly and efficiently like you could with the stock minigun or the Tommy Slav. Now, of course, I'd say this can be counteracted with the advent of right-click, but of course, we've already covered that comes with the pain of becoming a human turtle, and not like in the engineer way. 
There's one stat that I can't find a middle ground for in this though. If your brass beast is spun up and you fall below 50% health, you'll receive a 20% damage resistance bonus. I don't entirely know why this is here, but I have to explain a little bit before I can fully state why. Keep in mind this is just a brief glance over each of these stats, what they can do if they were just stats individually. So now that we've covered most of the stats with exceptions to the last one, let's look at how it performs in practice. The Brass Beast, for what it's worth, can make a pretty good defensive tool. Of course, movement is still a huge help for defensive stands. It's not nearly as important as the whole point of defense is to keep from having to move backward. So standing in one spot can be helpful. With a steady supply of ammo and a nice amount of health at your disposal, you could effectively become an absolute powerhouse on defense. Then again, you become an absolute target on defense. Snipers and spies specifically will target the shit out of you. Not moving will put you at risk for many things more often than moving will, which is why it's still a very important factor on a defensive setup. But on to offense, that's a different story. On offense, the brass beast becomes a bad beast. The thing becomes nearly useless, and you'd assume with the damage buff it would be very easy to get in there and take him down, but that's not the case. You see, offense requires reaction time, speed, and damage, and the Brass Beast provides only one of these three categories, leaving much to be desired for an offensive playstyle. This weapon just can't be that effective in most attack situations, except for one, specifically Payload. Payload is unique in that the attacking team doesn't have to move to a stationary objective, but rather with a cart holding a bomb. So staying on the cart is primary objective numero uno, and defending the attack objective. While I might argue that this isn't much of an improvement over regular attack defenses like Control Point or King of the Hill, the idea that you and the cart move at almost the same pace most of the time, so moving slower and pushing the cart have amazing synergy, you have something to defend while you attack, making use of the slower movement nerf and the damage buff, and this stat still makes no sense and it doesn't fit into the argument. This stat particularly perpetually perplexes me. I have no idea how it's supposed to fit into the weapon's design. What's the point of it? Why is it here? This stat seems to promote both playstyles. But you said payload promotes both styles! Yes, but look, the payload heals you. As a heavy, you are designed to be healed. When are you expected to fall below 50% health? This stat only promotes taking damage and being harmed, something you as a tank should be doing, but not on purpose. Heavy even has a secondary he can use to heal himself. So how, I ask, how am I expected to use this to any advantage of my own? Well, I can only imagine this is a failsafe to make up for the disadvantage to your reaction times implemented by this invention. But even then, not being able to move to dodge rockets or grenades as well as you could with stock or Tomislav or hell, any other minigun, it's completely null and void. It holds little use. It has no purpose. But I'm no game design expert, so I want to open a discussion. On Reddit or here in the comments, tell me how you think this weapon's particular stat should be used to any advantage at all. The Brass Beast, as an understatement, is underpowered. It's bizarrely placed in the Heavy's Armory in the niche playstyle section. It just doesn't fit into the casual match meta very well at all, only working in a few very specific situations that only veteran players would be good enough to track enemies, kill effectively, and live. Because living as a skill attracts medics. Because if you can live without them, with them you could be effectively immortal. However, the Brass Beast has one great use, and that's man versus machine. Man vs. Machine is Val's forgotten grandchild, and the Brass Beast's big negatives can only be effectively outdone using the upgrade system, like movement speed. But that's all I'm going to say about this, because I want to keep the video and the series as a whole geared toward a casual perspective. But look into this further, I highly recommend it. And with that, the Brass Beast is most simply a downgrade. Personally, as someone who considers themselves a decent heavy when using things like Sasha, Svetlana, or even the Natasha, Oksana, from a personal viewpoint, desperately needs to be reworked, and I won't sleep right until I know why this resistance is here. This has been Cody. Game over.
Hey, all you wonderful people. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Over the last week, the Frontier Justice video did a lot better than I was expecting it to, possibly because I put it out on the Reddit for people to see, and, you know, things tend to get viewed more when you put it out there for people to see. So, thank you to Reddit. Uh, second of all, I wanted to ask a favor of all of you. Um, if you would like to be in a video for the 100 subscriber special, I'm currently sitting at 99, uh, I want you to reach out to me on Discord, uh, you know, because that's probably the best place to reach out to me on. Basically what the video is going to be is going to be a live feedback session. I'm going to interview each person that I pick. Uh, basically what you're going to do is take your TF2 main, you're going to watch one of the videos if I have multiple in the class. Right now I've got Scout, Engineer, Medic, and Pyro videos out, and along with the video you just watched a heavy video. So basically what I want is for you to reach out to me on Discord and tell me what class you play, what video you want to look at, and like what kind of feedback you want to give. It would really help me to hear from you personally as a viewer what you thought of each of the videos. Keep in mind a lot of them are older videos from two, even three years back, so a lot of them won't have the same production value, but I feel like those videos get overlooked a lot. And especially, I really want to hear from spy mains, because I get a lot of comments on the Ambassador video to this day. So that's gonna do it, I'm gonna put up the end card now. Uh, reach out to me on Discord, right here, you know, right here somewhere, in the middle, down here. And I look forward to hearing from anyone that may have something they want to say.